today's job, I have, I'm working on a collaboration for, to make a synthesis phylogeny out of bees. And I've done some uh, various corrections. Uh, one thing I found I needed to do is I needed to add, add a couple more source trees to, to provide a bit more information. Uh, so what I did to do today is to incorporate these two new source trees into the into the uh, pipeline. Uh, so from particularly from this year in, in the, the pipelines for making large phylogenies, I've placed a lot more emphasis on utilizing uh, uh, published source trees. Okay, so I think this is one of them. Okay, so this needs adding in. Okay, so here I'm going to add this at this point. Here's a new source tree, uh, note format, and in this command, it's just going to be copied to the working directory. I've added, I've added another one. I need to make sure probably this. Also. Okay, it's going to be confused about these names, but okay. So we have a phylogeny of uh, this Andronid subfamily and uh, the Melitid family. Two two groups from the from the bees. So let's just navigate to our working directory. Okay, this uh, we have source trees, which is a variable containing a list of file names, and we're going to go through each of this, each entry in the in this list is going to go. Each entry is going to be successively put into this variable name, which is called file. The name which will let me print to the screen, echo just prints a, a variable to the screen or, or anything for that matter. And we're going to be copying it, which should be in this, held in this uh, directory here to the, our working directory. And this, I don't think we need this, hash these out. Okay, so it's just. Rather, um, I inserted this grep command, so this will grep uh, prints. It searches for some from string in in a file, and if it finds it, then it prints it, and it is found. So I'm searching just for a space, which there shouldn't be any, and it's printed. So that it looks like there's this, there's a space in this file which there shouldn't be. So let's look the old fashioned way. Uh, 
Uh, so in, in so this is Nuic Nuic format file, and these are the terminal IDs. So it's best not to have spaces in in, in your terminal IDs. So I, I use underscore. The alternative way to do it would be to have these quoted, which is uh, which can is some people that are open to your life will have these uh, single quotes or internal IDs, uh, but uh, some some software will, will will have a problem with that. So I don't know how I do it. Anyway. Should be another one. So let me just space here and see if okay, well, 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 let's just try this again. Okay, so we've copied in one, two. Fourteen uh, published trees, uh, tree files, so computer readable, machine readable file logins. Fourteen and here, so we just copied them into our working directory. Now we need to analyze them. I'll add, add these two new ones to the next variable we'll be working with here. So species matrix uh, so is a colon barcode alignment backbone. So what I'll be doing here is um, I'll be grafting subtrees from from these candidate trees here onto a backbone and a backbone I, I will always use some omics topology taxon table containing taxonomic information so it looks fine okay so I'll copy these variables into the, into the shell let's try Uh, grafting these. Okay, so for uh, so grafting, so this is a taxonomic. I mean, grafting is is a quite a basic function in in, in tree searching, uh, but it's kind of um, taxonomic based grafting, so which requires inferring taxa for terminals of the backbone tree and looking for these taxa in, in source trees and where you have a match the, these are these can be crafted in I uh, so I've implemented this in, in a script uh, after implement, implementing it uh, I did then encounter one one other publication which has done some, some, something very similar um, in any case, uh, I, so this is on, I've actually duplicated this uh, script, uh, I've also called it, I think, graft philo, and this is on GitHub, uh, so uh, under, under that, I'll, under two different names. Anyway, let's just let's do this and see what happens. So it has these two source trees have uh, resulted in um, additional information. So previously made 16 separate subtree graphs and uh, with those two extra source trees, uh, two additional subtree graphs. 
which is increasing the number of terminals. Now, Huge number of output files and produced by the script for a lot of them kind of uh, for historical, historical reasons and are not really used anymore. Um, but in any case, I mean, so somewhere I do have code for making a plot from these. Um, Yeah, here it is. Grafted labeled. So I'm not going to use exactly the same file name, I'm going to, in case I want to look at the older versions for whatever reason so I'm going to change the file names So we have a, so this is a, a, one of the outputs of this grafting algorithm and it has a NUIC format result and it has some internal labels. So this is what I think we'll, we'll try and plot this. Uh, process NUIC is what I use for plotting. Um, probably need to insert can you see what we get out of this so process NUIC does a whole lot of different things but one thing it does is it converts the converts a NUIC string into a a plot so a a series of commands and x and y positions for for plotting it in R. Okay, and we have a, have a result of sorts. So what we added, we've added, just added two new source trees. Let's go back to these. Ramas 2022 and we can, so I'm building up a, a database of published source trees, which I can show here. So we can get more information on these two new source trees. Let's just see what they are. So Remas 2022 and Renine, which is here. So this is a molecular tree, multi-gene, about 8,000 base pairs, nine loci. Ah, uh, yeah, this was this one actually reanalyzed. They didn't. Uh, well, unfortunately, quite normal. They don't. People don't often make available their tree topology as a machine readable. But at least sometimes they do make uh, the matrix available. And in this case, they did, and I just re reanalyzed this. Uh, so this is the 
Panur Panurgani, which is a subfamily of Andrena Andrenzi. Uh, about ninety five terminals after all this after processing. Yeah, you know, I re-inferred the topology in Raxamel using their available matrix and the, their partitioning scheme and seem to be exactly the same as after a quick look. Uh, so this has been grafted onto the MOS 2022. Now this doesn't have the Just has a tax on her. Let me. We should have another. Let me craft it. So, okay, what was the name again? Uh, Ramos. So, here's a log file from the crafting algorithm. And let's see what happens. So, it reads a source tree. Found. For the, I've got 95 terminals for this phylogeny, and 86 of those terminals, it was yeah, found a lineage or higher 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 taxonomic information. The rest of them would be ignored. And here is the some text output from the algorithm for assigning higher text and names for the internal nodes of the of the source tree, uh, which these are these need to be known uh, if uh, for the to do any crafting later. So it's going through all the nodes of each source tree. And for each node, uh, inferring some uh, taxonomic names such as this uh, subfamily, which is the focal taxon. Okay, so. And then later in the alg algorithm, it's going through the the backbone tree, or the, the omics uh, topology, which will remain fixed, and going for each terminal and try and see if it can graft anything on there. And it's so this is a terminal called Protandrina. Uh, so there's no other representatives of. Protandrina on the backbone tree, so it can just give uh, replace the genus species with, with a you can call it a, an exemplar of, of that genus, so then it assigns, assigns a genus name. Finds that there's a bunch of barcodes available for that genus, so we can go ahead and analyze further. Retrieved lineage information for that taxon. Now, all the uh, early after all the uh, internal nodes are analyzed and stored, and the uh, taxa, taxa assigned, it, so it can here search the, those stored information for any any matching taxa, and it's found it's found it here. So. With that, this taxon assigned to the assigned to the terminal of the backbone trees is found a matching taxon in, in the database of, of source trees here. So the backbone terminal. Protandrina will be replaced with source tree subtree. Uh, and and any. Uh, 
this looks to be the subtree itself here. Um, so we should be able to find these now in that uh, image. Yep, so proton doing here. And here's the tersoes halbitosis should be in here. Yep, yeah, here it is. Okay. So this is one of the of those two source trees we added we added here. Here is one one of these extra subtrees which we um, grafted. And uh, this should be a, another. So the other the source tree. Which is let's try and find this in the log. Okay, so in this case backbone terminal militia organs can we can assign attacks on militia? There's barcodes available for this. And then that source we source tree we just added contains that taxon so it can be crafted in. So let's look for Melita in this figure here. And here, here's the this new uh, subtree we crafted in. Uh, I think is which I've, I've adopted this this year and this uh, greatly reduces the search space search space of the downstream analyses and it's I think it's just a lot more efficient uh, there's no there's no need to be effectively reinventing the wheel because uh, we're we're highly unlikely to be actually be improve on on these published these very focused phylogenetic results. So these should be uh, incorporated. Uh, so what is just part of the process is grafting and following on following on from this. I'll be doing uh, some integration with the DNA, DNA barcode data. Uh, but maybe you don't need to can save this for another time and. We're about half an hour in, so maybe that's enough. Uh, so we have incorporated uh, some additional uh, topological information into uh, an Orbex backbone, and well, to do this, we we need to build a way. A, a database of, of of published source trees in other words. So I, I urge anyone who is uh, who is producing phylogenetic results to to make their results available in in all in all suitable repositories as a as a machine machine readable result. Okay. So look for today.